You know, welcome to Langhorne United Methodist Church's live stream worship service. Today, we're not live. <laughs> we are recording ahead of time, so um, you'll be able to see this um, on Sunday. Um, and so we just want to welcome you all here. Um, don't forget, we are still looking for readers. Our guest reader today is Linda Rutledge. We thank you for being here and welcome you. Um, and we're also looking for the musicians and singers. And if you have an instrument you'd like to play or sing, contact us and we'll make sure that you, uh, you uh, get set up to come in and do that. You can record at home, record here, do it live. You know, we'll, we, will, we will accommodate you as best we can. Um, we also would love you and your family to say hello to everybody. Um, send Mike Kephart a clip a video clip with your greeting around 30 seconds. No, definitely not more than a minute. Um, just to say, hey, everybody, and what you've been doing and, and how much you miss folks and looking forward to seeing them, etc. cetera. Um, and so that being said, we love seeing Linda, and she's got a neat fundraiser idea from stewardship and a few other items. So, Linda, tell us about your, your ex exciting news. We've been working very hard. Lynn Wallace has been working extremely hard on a um, virtual gathering that'll take place on the front yard of the church. If you did not receive the email from Lynn uh, yesterday or today, you will receive the letters that we sent out yesterday to explain what we're going to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. You will, there'll be signs, it'll have silhouettes on it if you prefer. Uh, there'll be sayings on it. You can put on it whatever you want. It's just to let everybody know that we are still here, that we love our church, we love everything, and we just miss everybody. Langhorn knows we're here. Anybody that rides by knows we're still here, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can get, you will send your form in to Lynn, and we will have you come in, put your whatever you want to put on it, any saying you want to put on your sign, or we can have somebody do it for you if you don't want to come. We'll make arrangements for you to meet here to do that. But it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's another way to help raise some money for the church. The signs are $25 a piece, and I think it's just a cute idea. The other thing we're working on, Holly's working on getting us the smile for Amazon, and I know if you're anything like me, You've been using Amazon a lot during this time, yes, and uh, we will be using the smile, and that will bring in funds to the church also. Okay. So let us now stand as we are able and pass the peace that is Jesus Christ to each other wherever we are. Peace be with you, Linda. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Beth. is from Psalm 149, 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Come all, receive God's grace and worship in the Lord in this place. Our first hymn will be 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and we'll sing all verses.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we invoke your presence this day in this place and in all places. Teach us, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and we will observe it to the end. Give us understanding that we may keep your law and observe it with our whole hearts. Lead us in the path of your commandments, for we delight in it. Turn our hearts to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn our eyes from looking at vanities. Give us life in your ways. Confirm to your servants your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that we dread, for your ordinances are good. We have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give us life. We ask all this to make us better disciples of your Son, the Christ, to make us better hands and feet to do your work in this world and to grow in grace and in love. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Teacher and Father God, your scriptures are meant for us to know you better, to teach us the lessons for life and to use when looking to make those decisions that will make a difference to you, to your children, and to all creation. Bless the reading and the hearing of your word today, O Lord. Bless all those who hear it with ears to hear, hearts to listen, and spirits to act on your behalf in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our epistle lesson comes today from Romans, 13, chap Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Hear now these words. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near, let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling, in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratis to, gratif to gratify its desires. Here ends the reading of the New Testament lesson. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Hear now these words. If another member of the church sins against you or the church, you go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of the two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if other, the, the offender refuses to listen to even to the church... Let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Here ends the reading of the gospel lesson. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, 
laws, order, rules, regulations, policies, procedures, commandments, directives, instructions, etc. All those words. What are the first feelings or thoughts that, that come into your mind when you hear these words? Now, for many, the thoughts can be you know, described as negative, reflecting perhaps a, a dislike or, or a, a, an uncomfortable feeling of being constrained or even bogged down with what you might feel are annoying or unnecessary rules that have to be followed. Mm. For others, such things are a comfort in the knowledge of the efforts that are made to prevent chaos, harm, hurt, suffering. We often wonder why, though, certain rules or policies even exist. And I can say from experience that many come into our lives because something negative happened somewhere because someone made a decision or choice of some sort that was bad or without thought of consequence or worse without conscience. Take, for example, a very simple rule, very minor rule in the grand scheme of things, even here in church. It's a simple rule in residential and day camping for kids. The socks and shoes rule. Now keep in mind the bulk of camp attention is generally put on the summer camp program, whether it's day camp or residential or maybe a combination of both. Summer by its nature, we all know, is very hot. And most folks prefer switching over to lighter clothing. And this includes shoes and socks if, if socks and shoes are even worn at all. A lot of people opt for sandals and flip-flops starting in, in late spring and ending sometime in early fall. And many would like to carry on that preference when they're attending camp and camp programs. But camps were finding that the program nature of camp really needed footwear appropriate to what was going on that would protect feet while running and playing sports, hiking on different kinds of trails, maybe doing stream hikes or pond studies. We also need good, sturdy, special shoes for boating, in case you did fall out of the boat and you had to deal with, with roots and things in the, in the, uh, under the water. Um, there's also climbing. Special shoes were needed. Sandals and flip-flops would not protect the feet in this environment. Some folks conceded to wearing shoes, but oftentimes they would wear them without socks. They'd draw the line about not wearing socks, which in a very active camp life created some very sore feet, especially in a camp like ours in South Jersey when I was there um, in the Pinelands where it's very, very sandy. Sand in shoes without socks or even, even for an extended amount of time in, in sandals was abrasive, very abrasive. And foot sores and blisters appeared within 24 to 48 hours of the child's arrival in camp and often ended up limiting that poor kid into what they could and couldn't do because their feet were so sore the rest of the week. This past week, I got a hold of some friends on Facebook who were past campers and staff, and I said, hey, you know, tell me, tell me about what it is you liked about our, our shoes and sock rule in camp, and tell me what you, you maybe didn't like about it. Well, I have to tell you that every single one that responded said, 
I didn't like to have to wear my socks and shoes all summer. I didn't like it. But all of them, all of them said they appreciated the rule because it did save their feet. It protected their feet and the campers that they had. One woman uh, reported that before that rule even existed, before my time working in, in camping many years, many, many years ago, she would have liked to have had that rule in camp. She would like to have been wearing shoes in camp instead of flip-flops when she stepped on a snake. That was uncomfortable for her, stepping on a snake. I think most of us would agree. Another former staff member credited the shoes and sock rule for protecting her and her campers from chiggers and ticks. The biggest complaint, though, from everyone was having to have to wear socks and shoes going back and forth to the waterfront, to the beach. That was the biggest complaint of all. The camp did alter the rule a bit in, in light of, of the a reasonable request that, that we only allow campers and staff to wear their sandals and flip-flops to and from the beach. And, you know, this helped out a lot because if, with, the, with the sneakers and the wet socks and all and, and the sneakers getting wet and everything, wet sandy feet and sneakers meant a very difficult time trying to get these, these socks and these shoes dry once they got back to the cabin. So oftentimes, these were the only shoes the kids had to wear. And so it was difficult to get them dry for them to wear the rest of the evening and even the next day. So it was really difficult to clean and dry them. And the second thing was, with all that sand and in the socks and in the shoes, it meant for a very messy cabin, more cleaning out of the cabins. And then the third thing was having all those socks and shoes being used down at the waterfront meant a lot of nasty socks were left on the beach and in the and in the swimming area and in the lost and found it usually ended up on the front porch of the office. And guess who had to sort through socks? Yeah, that was nasty. So by, by adjusting that rule, it was very logical and it helped. But having shoes and socks in, in camp overall was very important. It was a, a very loving, important rule. The rule was one of care and love for the safety and the well-being of the campers and staff. Love for one another was the foundation of the rule, as it should be for all the rules we create in this human life. And by loving each other, we also show love to God. So if we're making up rules, we need to ask ourselves, does this rule show love to one another, and does it show love to God? If it doesn't, if it's ego-driven or greed-driven, then it's not appropriate. It's not a rule that God wants us to have. God, the Father, and Son have given us several rules and commandments. The greatest of these, of course, is to love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus later on in John added that when you love your neighbor, you should be loving your neighbor as I have loved you and continue to love you. That was the new commandment. You had your two greatest commandments, and then Jesus added that third one, so that those are your three greatest commandments. And after he had talked about the first two in Matthew... He did say at the very end of that second one that on these two commandments lay all the rest of the laws and the commandments. And it speaks exactly to what I said before, that a law and a commandment that comes from God and anything, any law that we have needs to have that core, that foundation of love. If it, if it helps somebody, that's what we need to um, need to. Uh, impress upon people, that it is, a, it is a rule made out of love. 
Jesus and Paul in today's epistle lesson are, are saying also that the commandments are summed up in that word love. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The reason, for the, the, reason the camp staff appreciated the rule was because it really did protect them and the campers. It was a sacrifice worth making to them because they knew the camp loved them as staff and also loved the campers too. Our morning prayer today, it was based on Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40, and it reflected that same appreciation for God's laws and ordinances, for God's rules. But you know what? It also asked... It also asks that we stay on God's path and avoid those temptations that will do us harm at some point. We are all tempted to break a rule at some point. We all want to say, oh, it won't hurt this time. And sometimes it doesn't, but we don't want, definitely don't want to get into that habit, do we? Because it may do us harm or someone else at some point. And by dis disregarding the law, it's not respecting the entity or the people that created the law in the name of love. As disciples, we all need a discipline in our lives that incorporates a routine of good behaviors and keeps us connected with God and each other in love. Policies and procedures we design should guide us and be meant to reflect our love for God and each other in this world. They should be based on God, on those God already has given us, written in Scripture. That's why our United Methodist book of policies and procedures is called the Book of Discipline. And all that is contained therein is scripturally based. And it's meant to take care, to take care of this body of believers we call United Methodists. Our scriptures today are specific to the discipline for Christ's disciples. Disciple, a discipline within the church community. And if you study these scriptures closely today, you can't help but see and hear that love for each other is the most important part of the message. Second only to love in Paul's message there in Romans is honesty, being honorable, honesty with ourselves and each other, transparency. Or being transparent is that 21st century word that we use now, being very transparent with each other. When we sin, we tend to try and hide that sin from others, to remain in darkness and keeping others in the dark. There's not, ju there's not just the sin, but then there's a lie about who you really are. Who are you to those others when you are hiding that sin? How does sin lying or misleading by omitting or avoiding truth show love to others? Sometimes we feel that little white lies are harmless, but they are still leaving others in the dark. We even lie to ourselves. But Paul tells us that we need to be open, to put on that armor of light, living lives of honesty and no more hiding in the darkness of sin from ourselves and others. We already know, we already know, my friends, that we cannot hide from God no matter how dark it is. So why hide from others and ourselves? It does not show love for others or for God. Love for God drives our daily discipline of study. 
and the time that we spend with God. That's probably why those times over the many, many decades that we've, many of us have lived, why those times have been given the name devotions, as we show how devoted we are to God and to spending time with God. This should be part of our daily discipline. We should discipline ourselves to do this every day. Our lives extend to the community of believers here in the church and in the church worldwide, but also the community of potential believers that need Jesus very much. Our discipline mandates interaction with each other and these people, no matter who others may be. And that mandate warrants love in all situations. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus teaches us, teaches his followers and us about working with those who sin against the church or us as an individual. If, you're, if you are or have been on our staff parish relations committee, this scripture might sound familiar. Matthew 18, 15 through 20 is the basis for our conflict resolution process. It outlines step by step what needs to be done to resolve an issue, the very basic components. But when it gets to the point where the person refuses to listen or work toward lo a loving resolution, Jesus tells us to see and relate to that person as a Gentile or a tax collector. And, and for some people who aren't really thinking back about Jesus, they get confused by that. Because as you remember, in Jesus' time, Jews thought of Gentiles and tax collectors as people that they needed to avoid. They didn't like them, and they, they even shunned them as idolaters and sinners. They pushed them away. They raised their eyebrows when Jesus ate with them. But my friends, Jesus ate with them. So by, by pushing away these people, is that, is that what Jesus wants us to do? Does he want us to treat others by pushing them away? No. Remember what I just said. Jesus ate with them, didn't he? He welcomed them. He did not want us to push them away when they don't agree with us. He loved them. He welcomed them. He made them feel they were truly part of God's family. Jesus forgave them. He wanted to keep the sinner in the flock, in, in the light of Jesus Christ, in the light of hope and peace and grace, in the light of love, no longer in darkness. We need to love them, these people who disagree with us, not dismiss them and send them on their way. If, though, in the light of love, they choose to leave and announce, I'm done, we can't force them to stay. But we still love them. And we pray for them. And we still love them. If our efforts of love lead to an agreement in love or Sadly, a separation at the offender's choosing. Either way, God will provide divine support for us going forward. Because we use love. But we need all of us to remain disciplined in our lives as Christians to continue in love. We need to follow the mandates given to us by God through the Father and the Son and avoid the temptations to put these rules and commandments aside openly or even in secret. We must avoid those temptations. These rules and mandates God has given us are good. They're necessary. 
their love. We must remain in the light of truth and honesty and love with ourselves and each other. My friends, God's ordinances and commandments are given to us because God loves us and God wants us to love each other. Let us all live by God's law and make love the foundation for all that we say, all that we create, all that we do for all of our lives. In Jesus' holy name. Let us pray. God of justice, mercy, love, and peace, we come to you this day on behalf of our families, friends, people of our local church and your church and your world church, on behalf of all creation and on behalf of those who do not know you, Lord. We also come on behalf of ourselves and the personal joys and burdens we may bear. We come to lift our prayers, concerns, and celebrations now to you in our silence at this time. Great healing and merciful God, we are your people. Let your presence be known to all in need of your love and mercy. Continue to bring relief to all those who are dealing with the aftermath of weather, fire, war, and riot destruction. We pray for Christ's comfort and peace to be poured out over and upon them at this time and going forward on the difficult journey they have ahead. We as the world are in need of much healing for the wounds and suffering that result from illness and injuries of mind, body, and spirit. Whether acquired by chance or through accidental or intentional acts of others or ourselves, we need to be reminded of your love and your covenants of grace. For by accepting your love and loving others, your healing powers are at work in us and through us. But action is always needed by us to be and remain faithful and loving. As Paul says, we are to owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another fulfills the law. Love your neighbor as yourself. Help us to step past our own suffering, fear, and anger and treat others who are resistant to your love like Jesus treated the Gentiles and tax collectors and other sinners, like he treats us. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Now it is our time for our offertory prayer and dedication and thanks. A reminder. Again, that if you would like to donate, you can send in your checks straight here to the church. Attention, the secretary will take care of it here. Or you can press the uh, donation button on our website and uh, donate with your credit card. I turn over the prayer now to Linda. Generous and loving God, we give you thanks for the great bounty you provide to all your children here on earth. Our gifts to you may seem small, but they come with love and the hope for a better world the prayer that you will bless these gifts and they will grow in love and grace to show that we love you and that we love our neighbors as ourselves, as Jesus commanded us to do as the two greatest commandments. The same Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Receive now this benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all love, faith, joy and peace in believing and in your life as a Christian so that 
by sharing love in all you do, you may abound in hope for others and yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight is Jesus, Lord, We Look to Thee, number 562, if you have a hymnal, verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you all for joining us this week. Thank you, Linda, Linda Rutledge, for helping us out this week. Yeah, I loved having you here. Um, again, if you like to, to do some reading and helping out, just give us a call. We'll, we'll put you on the list. We're putting together um, a whole schedule. So we're excited about getting that done and incorporating more voices in our worship service. So, Oh, gift cards. Yes, we'll we have. be selling them again this year. Hopefully in October, we'll have a list and the Friendly Voice, which mm -hmm. Holly has been doing a fabulous job with, and we'll have a list again. And we also still are doing the shared meals, so we still also need meatloafs or monetary donations okay. for that as Very well. Okay, very good. All right, so that wraps it up for this week, folks. We will see you next week. Next week, I will be doing, if, if I get all the equipment in, we'll, we'll have a, a, a special little thing happening that we haven't seen for a long time. So if all works out, we'll get that done. I don't want to, you know, whet your appetite and then go, oh, it didn't happen. But just, just we'll, we'll get it going here, okay? So take care, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.